Mike Leach is the most recognizable resident of Pullman, Washington. All right, how you doing? Hey, go Cougs! Go Cougs! Coach walks to work. You know, you can go right through the middle of campus, which that's cool, except for then you get in too many conversations and you don't make it to the office as quick as you'd like. The guy loves pirates. And wrote a book about Geronimo. We know he'll answer any question. What my suspicion is, knowing nothing about this, I think if you're in the middle of Iowa and it's really flat, you can see the weather pattern coming forever. It's going to do this. But above all, he is the godfather of the air raid offense. What makes this air raid offense so special? It seems like any quarterback that plays for Mike Leach ends up having a prolific career. Really inventing this air raid offense. Well, it's, it's the most unique passing game, I think, in football. Can their defense make enough stops to keep pace with the air raid? People want to know what Mike Leach is thinking about everything. We found bones of dinosaurs and everything else, but we haven't found bones that I've heard of, of Bigfoot. Despite the fact I don't even know the rules of it and couldn't begin to describe it even in a general way, and all you people that like disco or want to revive disco, you're out of your mind. I don't care what you think. We're the only ones. We're, I mean, really, why? Have you been to the other planets? You know, ghosts have been doing it for years, so they enjoy it. All right, any other questions? So many people have come to you for advice, random, around football, whether it's the air raid, whether it's marriage, whether it's pirates. You kick out a tweet, would anybody be interested in a course? Coach, almost 50,000 people responded in some manner, and now you finally have a class. Yeah, we are stunned. Um, we sent it out kind of joking around and the, the over-under was, was 100. And this spring, after an overwhelming Twitter response, Mike Leach joined up with former Washington State Senator Mike Baumgartner to teach a six-week seminar, Leadership Lessons in Insurgent Warfare and Football Strategy. I want to welcome everybody here to this class. Anytime you do a teamwork thing, there's a lot of moving parts, so We'll try to make this as seamless as possible. In addition to that, one of the biggest things that uh, this type of a setting has to offer is uh, a variety of people and their ideas and thoughts and things like that, because uh, we're kind of commingling subjects here that have more in common than I guess that either me or Senator Bumgartner realized uh, when we initially uh, started talking about this. I got into the world of counterinsurgency when I was in Iraq uh, during the Iraq surge, and what I found is it was easier to explain concepts of counterinsurgency if I would use football as a paradigm and a metaphor to explain some of the concepts, and that really the students kind of got it. And then when I looked at Coach Leach, you know, he is an insurgent revolutionary. What he has done with the air raid, his ability to take underdog forces and attack conventional forces and take conventional strengths and turn them into weakness with his strategy. And Mitchu, nice job, and that's six. Desmond Patman gone. You know, I guess we should also say that, you know, neither of us think that, uh, that football is war. You know, sometimes it's an analogy to get made. You know, war is life and death, football is a game. But there are things that you can learn, you know, from this paradigm. Philosophy wise, we want to maximize space. We want to attack the entire field. Now, the entire field is 100 yards long. So, by attacking the whole field, I believe you pretty much have sideline to sideline and about 30 yards downfield. And the reason you have 30 yards downfield uh, consistently is that's about what you can pass protect for. He's wrote about Geronimo. Uh, he's wrote about football. Uh, he's talked about, you know, chasing raccoons. How does he, I don't know how he knows this stuff, but um, he puts out himself every day. And I think, I think it's awesome. I think it's how it should be. People ask me questions, I'll answer anything. I don't know, I've always felt like this. I've always felt like, uh, you know, if you be honest and call it like it is, then there's less to keep track of. And I think that started in law school or even when I was a kid. Mike Leach grew up in Cody, Wyoming, with parents who encouraged his enthusiasm for learning. My mom was uh, quite well read and read to us uh, when we were young as kids and not just the easy books either. She'd read the, the tough ones. I could ask my mom anything and I mean and she'd answer it. 
one notable exception, Santa. I was misled on Santa for a while, and, 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 and it was devious, it was deliberate, uh, it was premeditated and planned. I mean, shortly after the Santa news, go by the TV and they're advertising the public library. And I'm like, wait a second, what's this? Uh, well, uh, it's a library, you can go get books. And I was always into books. Well, why haven't I heard of this? What do you mean you didn't tell me? Well, what else haven't you told me? Having some trust issues on whether I'm ever gonna get back to a library, um, I got the biggest book I could find about Geronimo. I'd started coaching uh, baseball when I was 15. And so from ages 15, uh, through my sophomore year in college, I always had a baseball team. I'd think all about if I move this guy to first base and bat this guy third, and, you know, working the, through the lineup and drills and stuff. And, you know, I was fairly consumed with, you know, the moving parts and being the best baseball coach that I could. So then I went straight away to law school and this coaching stuff stuck with me. I went through this thing in law school where I'm thinking, okay, do I have a great law practice, coach in my spare time, or coach when I retire? And I was fearful of putting that off because I was afraid that, you know, if I liked it too much, I would have big regrets that I hadn't uh, coached uh, uh, instead of law or something. And so I figured, well, I'm gonna coach for, you know, two years, three at the most, get it out of my system. Well, I've been coaching ever since. <laughs> discipline to play one play at a time. Have the discipline just one play at a time. Get the most out of each play. One play at a time. Here we go. Hey, all week, baby, let's have a great day. One, out, three, one, two, three. Successful insurgents turn conventional opponents' strengths into weaknesses. And what Coach Leach has done with the air raid is develop a strategy that utilizes asymmetric advantage to turn conventional opponents' strengths into weaknesses. The real genius of Leach as a leader isn't necessarily the scheme or the strategy, it's the institution that he's built here, the repetition, bringing on good coaches and delegating to them, you know, choosing a small playbook that they wrap rather than a big playbook and they try to out-scheme people. There's just really a lot of good management lessons in terms of how he approaches things. Greatest time of possession in the world's a touchdown. Even if you score on one play, you get the amount of time that it took to score the touchdown, plus how much time it takes them to match that touchdown. In the last four years, they almost lead the conference in victories with a class that has been, on average, those recruiting classes and then towards the bottom of the class. That's just, I mean, that's just fascinating to look at and to study. This was the most complete game that we've played since we've been here. And I want you to, to remember and understand what it takes to play a game like this. You do your job and you play the next play and everybody does it together and then it's incredibly expo explosive. But I want you to think about how <laughs> it requires everybody. And the other thing that's just amazing about, the, I think, Leach as a leader is that this isn't the first time he did this. You know, he did the same thing at Texas Tech almost 10 years ago. He was the national coach of the year with an 11-2 team at Texas Tech, which is usually not the foremost in people's minds about being a football power. So to do it once is pretty impressive, and to do it twice, I think, is just really, uh, really amazing. So uh, let's just hope he keeps it going. We will see you guys all same time, same place uh, next week, and we really appreciate you participating in the class. Proud Coug and uh...